Hello and uh, welcome to this very special program. Exactly 10 years ago, Zambia lost its second Republican president, Dr. Frederick Jacob Titus Chiluba, born 30th April 1943 and uh, died on the 18th of June 2011. A decade later, today we gather here to celebrate uh, the life of uh, this uh, gallant soldier and to help us with uh, that discussion, we have uh, different people that uh, worked uh, closely with him, that followed his political career, but that were family uh, to him because he was more than a Republican president, but a father, uncle, brother, cousin, a relative. For this reason, we have uh, as a part of uh, discussants uh, on this very special program, a politician uh, in uh, Mr. Rafael Nakachinda, We'll also be talking to uh, Mr. Enoka Vindele, who served as uh, Dr. Chiluba's uh, vice uh, president. And we also have the opportunity to speak uh, to uh, his uh, last born daughter, uh, Virosia uh, Chiluba, as uh, we look at uh, how um, he was as a family man. But let's get started uh, perhaps uh, with. Um, Mr. Rafael Nakachinda, uh, who's uh, a, you know, a politician and uh, has quite a bit to speak with regards uh, the memories of uh, the late uh, uh, Dr. Chiluba. Thank you for being with us today. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Franklin, and um, I'm greatly honored to have been uh, considered to be part of the discussions uh, right. on this very, very uh, from, important day. From what perspective do you view Dr. Chilba? Uh, first of all, um, rightfully so. Uh, I think he's uh, credited to be among the uh, critical uh, personalities that um, uh, ushered in the multi-party democracy. And uh, he was privileged among his colleagues to have also been elected uh, leader uh, of the movement for multi-party democracy that was basically a movement to pressure the one-party state at a time uh, for the introduction of multi-party uh, democracy. And I think when it was succeed, you know, the, uh, the movement succeeded uh, in you know, pressuring the, pressurizing the reintroduction of multi-partyism um, and he was elected leader. Uh, he's credited to be the father of democracy because I think the, the the thrust of his leadership was uh, basically um, uh, uh, you know, making sure that the freedoms for which as a, a movement were you know, promising to guarantee the citizens of this country were actualized. Freedom of association, freedom of uh, ex you know, expression, or freedom of speech if you may like. And in terms of the economy, uh, I can say that um, the <coughs> development that we have uh, witnessed this far, uh, even what uh, the Patriotic Front government has been able to achieve in terms of infrastructure and so on, is as a result of the strong foundation that was laid by uh, uh, Dr. Chuluwa's administration. Mm. Uh, the approach in terms of the uh, liberal approach, whether it is economy, whether it is with the media, every sector uh, somehow um, the, his leadership created an environment in this country where if you are to fail, it will be as a result of your choice not to take advantage of the, the opportunities that uh, uh, <coughs> the new culture, as they call it, uh, had brought and presented to the Zambian people. Right. So so sp speaking about new culture, he <coughs> did come up with a, a different kind of, uh, or instilled a different kind of thinking. Mm. Uh, entrepreneurship, ownership, right. and things like that, which, which was uh, a, a bit of a different shift from the, what you might call, dependence on the government for everything, like your housing, uh, jobs, and so on and so forth. That uh, spirit of uh, making Zambians to consider uh, being landlords and, 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 and standing on their own, what do you think it has done? What kind of legacy do you think it left in that sense? Well, Zambia has now become a land of possibilities for everyone. I mean, uh, uh, before, whether it was uh, political leadership, at some point it was a preserve of those that were privileged uh, to be part of 
quote unquote cartel favored by the authorities at the time during the one party state. But now I'm seated here, um, having been passionate about this country, uh, offered myself, and uh, I've been privileged in my lifetime to have served this country as a member of parliament, as minister, or to the fact that. Uh, uh, in opportunities have been opened up for anybody that uh, uh, would want to play a role or would want to achieve anything in this country. So that kind of mentality uh, to shift from a dependent syndrome to was not an easy outfit really to talk, you know, because everybody thought it's government to provide. But this time around, uh, it's a new culture. Go and make your money. Go and do whatever it is that you think you can do. If you can only have some kind of a vision or go in your heart possibilities uh, or opportunities are all available to you, you can achieve anything. Um, but I must say that uh, the fact that we are uh, celebrating his life 10 years after his passing, uh, there's one thing that has always robbed me of my peace whenever we are called upon to discuss the legacy of Dr. Chiruva. And one such thing is that um, and I'm basically drawing from the fact that he was a very courageous man himself. He was not afraid to confront any situation. He spoke his mind. And I hope as a way of celebrating who he was, we could also be permitted to speak our minds, uh, especially discussing the issues of his legacy. I have taken personal interest to study issues around the allegation of corruption against him that led to him being uh, prosecuted for seven years. Um, I was privileged to have been a member of parliament as a backbencher, and I took interest to you know, go and read and study the answers and so on. And I can confirm here that I think there's something that this country needs to do about that whole episode. There's need for um, uh, us as a people to revisit that episode uh, and where there's need for restitution, uh, it, it, we need to restitute it because I don't think we can continue to move forward as a country and expect that we, um, uh, that, uh, we will not be haunted by some of the things that happened around that time. Mr. Tembo, it was amazing to discover that uh, uh, at Parliament uh, there was a motion moved uh, uh, where 167 allegations were leveled against Dr. Chiruva as a basis for the removal of his immunity, that he had committed crimes, uh, you know, and uh, uh, allegations, like I said, up to 167. But it so happened that, first of all, even just the removal of his immunity at Parliament was irregular because it was basically just a head of state that went to make a presentation, and according to the, 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 the standing orders, when there is a speech, whether by head of state or indeed uh, if it's a minister of you know, finance who presents a budget, it is expected that parliamentarians will first react to that speech and give their views. But it turned out that instead of debating uh, in terms of uh, reac reacting to that speech, it turned out to have been a motion to remove uh, the immunity of uh, uh, Dr. Chiluva. The then uh, lead of government business is uh, on record uh, trying to guide, uh, you know, Honorable Kavinder, uh, his honor, the former vice president, Honorable Kavinder, who was lead of government business in the House, attempted to guide that there's no motion uh, on the floor to remove immunity. And I think we are doing this in an emotional manner. If at all these allegations are to really be a basis for the removal of the immunity, can't we interrogate, maybe have a, com you know, a, a committee of parliament to interrogate further and give a report on whether these allegations, because they're just allegations. Parliament itself must satisfy itself that there is a premier fast against this gentleman before we can proceed to remove immunity. That was all, you know, everybody was excited for political experience and so on. Sadly, uh, Mr. Tembo, the remo immunity was uh, lifted. The investigating wings and uh, all those that uh, were placed with the responsibility to investigate and to prosecute Dr. Chiluva found that all the 167 allegations that were used to remove the immunity could not stand in court. There was no substance to those allegations. 
immunity is removed based on an irregularity, then they come and create six other charges where they were alleging that he has stolen $50,000, $100,000. The total amount was coming to about $500,000. You can imagine a person who uh, the same account they were referring to, I think it was a Zamtrup account, and when you look at the details, in that account he had personal money, uh, more than the amount of money that they were alleging he had stolen. So when you just look at the balance of it, if somebody has in that account a million uh, dollars, and then you, um, he, he's said to have spent $50,000, and that's how come he was acquitted on all the, the accounts that, or the allegations are going to see him. But even when he had been acquitted, the question that begs an answer is that uh, has there been any restitution? So, so today we are celebrating, of course, 10 years and saying the father of democracy and so on and so forth. But as a people, we are not courageous enough to visit because of propaganda, because of uh, um, many interests, foreign interests that were involved in that saga. And uh, in the end, you found that those who were pointing figures at Dr. Chiruba to have been corrupt have turned out to have been criminals themselves who enriched themselves through that process. And very few people have the courage to be able to say, no, we need to revisit that. Right. We made an attempt uh, when I was a backbencher to try and uh, move a motion in parliament uh, to have uh, Dr. Chiruba's issue re rediscussed in parliament. Not necessarily that uh, there's a, a specific decision that can be made by parliament since some of the matters went to court, but just that as a people, because that's the, the people's uh, assembly, is the people's uh, you know, house. Let it discuss what happened. Let's in, in, introspect because even the seemingly, uh, Mr. Tembo, the division that the country is, you know, going, you know, somehow, you know, first politically, in terms of ethnic and tribal issues, emerged as a result of even that particular, you know, episode. Because when it became obvious that it was uh, basically just, pe you know, uh, persecution for Dr. Chiruva and those they called his cronies. Uh, basically who were very close to him, most of whom were coming from one particular region of the country. It made that region, which is the northern block of this country, to also begin to, I mean by default, you know, begin to defend themselves and come form, and that is what became a basis for which the Patriotic Front today as a party emerged and became stronger because right. it became like a political a political uh, right. fight that needed to be fought politically. Right. I think uh, we, we, so the, the point for you generally is uh, there has to be a revisitation to the whole episode in order to kind of restore uh, in a sense in the, uh, uh, the the issues of you know uh, him having lost immunity and because the procedure was according to you irregular. Um, and if that is possible you would like that to to be done. I, I think mine is that it's hypocritical for us to be sitting like we're sitting and start to say, you know, Dr. Chiruba is a great man and all that and so on and Wallace was sweeping certain things under the, under the carpet. If he was a great man, uh, as we say it and we're genuine about it, then let's revisit how come in one sense we're saying he was a great man, in another sense he's a thief. Right. What happened? Can we reconcile that? How come he was acquitted? But even in his grave, people are calling him a thief. Mm. How come he was acquitted? His children are languishing. You know, um, I, I was almost, I was brought to near tears when I was paying a cater on uh, uh, Mwata Kazembe, who in discussing all these issues, he asked me a question, says, Honorable Kachinda, tell me, if you were to steal, wouldn't you want to steal to better your lives and the lives of your children? But how come this thief stole, but his children are in poverty? How come this thief stole, but there's nothing to show for it? Even the little that they confiscated from them, has, Mr. Tembo, has ended up in the hands of those who are investigating him. Even just from my moral standing, how can I be saying that uh, you're a thief, I'm investigating you, I get uh, your jacket, before even the due process of the law is concluded, I'm found wearing the same jacket that uh, I got from you. How can that really make sense? Right. Well, you obviously raise a very, uh, it's a d you know, deep conversation that needs to be had. That's what yeah. you're basically saying. Sort of I mean, things, everybody. Sort of sweeping things. I mean, uh, let's uh, not sweep the, and right. you know, when a precedence is set, there's, unless you correct it, it will continue to haunt. Right. That's how come you find that the only thing that saved the 
uh, President Monawasa from uh, ever being treated the same was the fact that he died in office. The only thing that uh, has saved, uh, you know, maybe I could uh, uh, commend His Excellency President Edgar Chakarungu in the sense that what could have been the retirement package for President Rupia Banda of threatening to court every other day, he took a different stance. And we hope that um, his position will be carried forward. But I think we can only guarantee that if we revisit that uh, fundamental precedence that was set on Dr. Chiruba and be able to identify that a, a wrong was occasioned, injustice was occasioned, how is it that during that same episode we had even our judiciary laundered to uh, foreign entities, signing MOUs with foreign entities who are putting money on the table to say, we want Dr. Chirua to be persecuted. We want that judge, that judge, that judge should be the ones that will be handling these cases. That majesty, that majesty. How can you have a justice system where, he, before we even take you to court, we have chosen a judge to, you know, to, to hear your matter? I mean, what kind of justice is that? Very deep conversation. Those, those are some of the issues I'm saying. Um, uh, there's need to revisit. There is more to Dr. Chiruva's, uh, you know, uh, prosecution or persecution, uh, if you like, that needs to be unveiled. When we're moving a motion at Parliament, you could tell that it always was failing on technicalities. And those technicalities, to some of us, uh, obviously it's a subject for another day, were not making sense. But if we are ever going to, uh, out of patriotism, out of uh, nationalism, uh, out of wanting this country to remain united, out of wanting to make sure that we set a correct standard, whether it's for the fight against corruption or indeed uh, integrity in terms of how we, uh, those who are privileged to be in government are supposed to conduct themselves, we must interrogate. We can't reduce this quote-unquote fight against corruption to be a, a tool for vendetta, a tool for being vindictive. That's how come today those who are in government um, and, uh, you know, we're going to an election, the sentiments are that if we lose power, we're going to be in big problems. Uh, you, you understand what I'm saying? I'm sure you hear this. We're all in the same environment. Why is it that kind of debate when, in fact, it's supposed to be a situation where it's about ideas? If your ideas are superior to mine, uh, well and good, let the Zambian people make a decision. And when they have made a decision that you are favored this time around to be in government, I should walk away with grace and say, Continue, my brother. You understand? But this time around, it's a fight. Why? Because there was a wrong precedence. Right. I think that's very clear. In, in, in closing, because we have to part company, um, the, the very fact that with, you know, the country going back to, to multipartism, mm -hmm. because he was part of the team that uh, ensured that that, uh, uh, that happened, uh, here, here, the country, here is uh, the country. What, in your opinion, um, should, in that context, Zambians remember about Dr. Chiluba? Well, I think uh, there are many things to remember about Dr. Chiluba. I mean, uh, uh, he's uh, in, among the president that made us proud, both locally, in the region, internationally. Uh, I mean, when uh, Dr. Chiluba uh, represented this country, whether it's at the UN. Uh, I, I, I'm sure uh, we all were looking forward to moments when he would be called upon to address the UN. Why? Because he had some command of, uh, of uh, uh, you know, oratory skill, and uh, he would communicate our views as a country in such an exceptional manner. Uh, highly gifted. Locally, whether it was in campaigns and so on, in the region, he commanded respect. I think um, the country remained a pioneer in many um, areas. Of course, uh, Dr. Kaunda himself, having been uh, uh, you know, the leader in the fight you know, for the liberation for, of the region and the continent, uh, before the continent could wake up to uh, what a nation would be, Dr. Chiruba came on the scene and began to articulate how that we can actually uh, grow as, an, as economies of the continent, uh, you know, at the same equal footing with uh, developed countries and articulated policies so effectively that he became a marvel. I mean, those are some of the things that uh, inspired some of us to join into politics and um, join politics at a tender age. Mm. Um, 
there are certain funny little things, but they make a difference. Uh, even just simple things like dressing. I mean, he was uh, immaculately dressed all the time. And uh, you can see I tried to make sure that when coming <laughs> here, I carry <laughs> something here to represent that that's mm -hmm. a new culture that came. Mm -hmm. We were in good safari suits. He came, you know, introduced us to double-breasted jackets and so on. I mean, just to, to say that uh, let's not beat ourselves down. Let's look up, look representable. Just uh, be confident of who you are as a people. And let's go there and uh, um, be on the global stage and be able to grab what we can for ourselves right. uh, and improve our lives and improve our communities and so on. Right. That's how I can describe. Uh, as a uh, final thought, yeah. his bold move to declare this country as a Christian nation. That just goes to speak to uh, his uh, uh, conviction uh, as a person, as a leader. Uh, and uh, uh, he led this country from a place of conviction, not only political convenience. I mean, to make a bold, controversial decision to declare Zambia as a Christian nation, really. Uh, uh, all I can say is that um, that is what has actually set this country apart. And that's one of the things that we must celebrate. And, um, and uh, it has also set a standard. That's how come today, whenever somebody wants to do something, uh, they are measured against that particular standard. It's a Christian nation. Why would you say that? It's a Christian nation. Why would you do that? It's a Christian nation. Why would we treat the other that way? Um, but beyond that, of course, uh, this is also a very spiritual, uh, deep uh, issue. Uh, those uh, from the church, you know, have taught us that uh, it was not just a mere pronouncement. It was also a covenant between this nation and, and, and God. And I think uh, we've witnessed that uh, this country has continued to enjoy peace, has continued to enjoy things that you know that uh, without uh, divine intervention on our own would have actually lost, whether it is peace or indeed lost certain things. But God has kept this country afloat and I think he will continue to keep this country afloat on the basis that we have continued to profess. Uh, our faith and profess our commitment to God. Uh, what is left is of uh, those of us who are still alive, those of us who are privileged to be in leadership, uh, to have some courage to do the right thing, some of which may be controversial. Among the things that uh, I would want to leave is that uh, we have a duty uh, to revisit our steps as a nation. Uh, there are wounds that need to be healed. There are wounds that need to be bandaged. There are wounds that need to be oiled. Uh, so that the country can heal completely and will move forward. And uh, I can only encourage uh, colleagues never to be afraid to be uh, controversial, uh, especially when you're controversial and you know uh, what you're dealing with. You are right about what you're dealing with. In this case, it is only right to restitute uh, when it comes to Dr. Chiru. Thank you very much for your time, and uh, we blessed <laughs> with uh, your presence and uh, obviously a uh, great conversation that needs to be had. Thank you very much, Mr. Tembo. We look forward to tomorrow's, uh, I mean, to celebrating uh, Dr. Chuba's life uh, and many other things around issues of democracy. And one of the ways to do that in this election year uh, is to, I think, honor Dr. Chuba by making sure that the campaigns are free of uh, violence. Right. Uh, I, I remember Dr. Chuba used to carry his manifesto and would say, please, <laughs> we made promises, you know, and we come to account. If we didn't do, you have the right to say you didn't perform. Right. But we're also coming back to make further promises that where we left, this is where, I mean, it was, a, it was refreshing. Right. Uh, I, I don't think the road shows, if it, Dr. Chiruva was the one uh, conducting the road shows, would have been road shows with pangas. I can assure you they were, would have been waving manifestos. <laughs> uh, you know, that's how I can put it, and I think we can honor him by doing that. Thank you very much. Thank so you. Rafael Nakatsinda, a uh, politician, and uh, giving his thoughts on uh, the, uh, you know, memories of uh, the late uh, uh, Dr. Uh, you know, Chiluba. Thank you for watching, and do take time, a moment, to remember uh, Dr. Frederick uh, Chruba um, for all that he did. And it is always nice to remember someone in their positive 
that positive light, that smile, that chuckle. Goodbye.